Spices are something to be celebrated. These are wonderful ingredients that add flavor, richness, and complexity to basically any dish you can think of. Unfortunately, lots of us aren't quite sure how to use these wonderful ingredients, but with a little bit of science, a little bit of know-how, you can use some simple techniques and tricks to bring some real life and flavor to your dishes. What is a spice? We all use them every day. This is allspice, also known as pimento. And a spice is basically something that comes from a plant that is highly, highly concentrated source of flavor. Flavor is kept in substances that we call flavor compounds. And within a spice, the flavor compounds are in little tiny sacks of oil buried deep within the actual spice itself. And our job as cooks is to get those flavor-filled oil sacks out of this hard thing. Generally speaking, I say that it's a good idea to use the whole spices rather than the pre-ground spices. Now, the reason I say that is that the moment, the instant really, that you break, bruise, crack, or in any way damage that spice, those oils, they escape, they're released into the air and they start to evaporate. So from that moment, you're losing some of the flavor that's locked inside this spice. So wherever possible, get the whole spices and then grind them yourself when you need them. I've got a selection of spices here. I've got clove, allspice or pimento, cinnamon and uh, caraway seeds here. And I'm gonna show you how you can choose spices to blend together so that you get the flavor from the dish that you want. So these flavor compounds, they serve a particular function. Where do these flavor compounds come from that are in our spices? Well, actually, when the plant was alive, these flavor compounds, they served a purpose. It might have been to protect the plant from predators. It might have been to attract a pollinator insect to it, but they're highly potent. If I were to try to eat this, it would be repulsive, which is why we only have to use small amounts of spices to get these powerful, these potent flavor substances, these flavor compounds to imbue into our dish. And amazingly, when you put small amounts of these bitter, not very pleasant substances into a dish, our brain, our, our mind perceives them as being something quite different. They can be sweet, they can be floral, very fragrant and very appealing. So it's all about putting the right spices together and in sensible amounts. The flavor compounds that give our spices their quality, they could be grouped into different flavor compound groupings. And these spices that belong to the same groups will often pair together and you can swap and change them. The spices that I've chosen for today belong to the sweet phenol group. So for that, I've got the cinnamon. It's got that warming, lovely, sort of Christmassy aroma. We've got allspice or pimento, which has similar qualities, belongs to the same flavor compound group. Allspice does to cinnamon. So we can chop and change them. They'll go together very well, but they have other flavor compounds in them that give them that unique nuances. So an allspice is different to cinnamon, but they pair together well. Clove, similarly, this is part of this sweet phenol group, and so it will go well, but it's got other substances in it that give it floral, kind of eucalyptus-y sort of flavors as well. So we're gonna blend these together, and I'm gonna also mix in the caraway, which belongs to a different group called the warming terpenes group. We're gonna mix these together and we're gonna make a blend. But before we grind our spices, I say that you should always brown them first. And you do that by roasting or toasting your spices. That brings on a whole new world of flavor to our spices that you miss out if you just get them and you grind them. So you brown them. And when you brown them, there's a reaction going on called the Maillard reaction. And on the surface of your spice, fragments of sugar and fragments of protein react together. When it gets to above about 130 degrees C, 
they react together and these hundreds and hundreds of new flavor compounds are made. And they could be nutty, they can be sweet, they can be woody, they can be toasted. And we'll get all that extra flavor just by browning them. And I'm gonna show you how to do that really simple in a dry pan. We'll put the hob on now and we'll put our spices in there. We can put all our spices in from our spice blend. So we've got all spice. I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of each in of all spice of clove and of caraway. Put them in there, nice hot pan, and you, all you're gonna do, you're just gonna leave it in there and let it brown. And you'll know when it's starting to happen, when you get the smells coming up, it will change. The whole room will fill with lovely smells. You'll get little bits of smoke coming off as well. We're gonna do some cinnamon as well. Just gonna break off a few little bits of cinnamon. So you're getting a whole new world of flavor on the outside that we're gonna get from this roasting of the spices. If you just bought the pre-ground stuff, you wouldn't get any of this. And as that goes on, as it's breaking, the oil's also being released, uh, which, which we can smell. Already I've got the smell coming off, and so I just need to keep shaking it, because if you don't, then the bits of the spice that are touching the pan itself, they will scorch and they will burn. And that's a reaction called pyrolysis, which is burning, basically. We don't want that. We just want the Maillard reaction. You can smell it already. It's fantastic. A lovely sort of warm, roasted. We've got all the smell of Christmas going on here. And so when we've got that and it's gone nicely browned, and we want to take it off the heat and just let it cool. So we don't want to overdo it. If it's starting to get blackened and charred, then we don't want it. That's burning. We definitely don't want that. When it comes to grinding your spices, you could just use a traditional pestle and mortar, but I recommend using just a simple little coffee grinder. This is just a small, basic, fairly cheap coffee bean grinder. Use it for spices, absolutely brilliant. Great for saving time. So I'm just gonna do that now with my cooled brown spices. In we go. All in there, lovely jubbly. Okay, and the lid on. I'll give it a blitz. So as I've ground these spices together, all those lovely oils have come out and they're mixed with all the brown, nutty aromas and flavors, and you can smell it as you blitz it. And the more you blitz it, the smaller the particles will get and the more intense the aroma and the flavor that will come out. So you're in control of how fine the grind that you want for your spice mix. So the more fine a grind, the more potent the flavor at the end. So now that we've broken down these spices into tiny little particles, those oils are released and they're evaporating right now as we speak. I can smell it. And the longer the time goes by, the more those flavors are lost. So ideally, when you've browned and you've ground your spices, use them on the same day. At a push, you could probably keep them stored for about two weeks, maybe a month, tight fitting jar, back of the cupboard, somewhere dark to preserve those flavor compounds for as long as possible. And remember, because it's oils, these flavors won't dissolve very well in water. So if you were to just get some of this and sprinkle it into cooking right at the end into your, into your big broth. The flavors won't infuse, it won't spread throughout the dish. They'll essentially just remain as tiny little particles floating throughout the dish, and you won't have that full flavor that's spread throughout the dish. So when you're cooking, you wanna cook, you wanna use some oil, always use fat with your spices because we want to infuse the dish with the flavors. Let those spices, those spice flavors escape into the oil. Right at the beginning of cooking, don't put it in at the end because you want to give it time for those flavors to spread throughout the dish right the way through the cooking. So we'll put the oil in, just general purpose cooking oil into our pan, just a little bit there. Okay, and then we'll get the, get the hob on the go. So we don't need to cook the spices again because we've already browned them. We just want to give it time for the flavor compounds to spread throughout the dish into the oil. Because if you've just got a big watery dish, then those, those flavor compounds, they can't diffuse, they can't spread out throughout the dish. So that's warming up quite nicely for me. So I'm not gonna cook a full dish. I'm just gonna get the thing started. So I've got my spice here. So I might just wanna put in a, 
put in a teaspoon or two if I'm going to make a, make a full size dish. So I'll put that in there now. So that's going in there. And because it's finely ground, this is going to burn quite quickly. So remember, if it gets too hot, it goes to about above 180 degrees C, you have this, this reaction called pyrolysis going on, which is burning. And so you're getting charred acrid flavors coming through as it scorches and as it burns. It's nicely brown. I can see it's all infusing throughout all the oil in the dish. And again, you're getting a release of that flavor once again. So here at this point, I might add a bit more oil, but at this point I would um, start adding other ingredients. So if I was going to make like a, a big sort of stew or something, I'd add, I'd add onions. Or if I was gonna make a sweet dish, I'd maybe add some apples at this point and then put up the layers of the flavors as we go.